Good afternoon. The last weekend of summer has come. And if somewhere in our distant homeland it was such a sad day, especially for schoolchildren, then now in Egypt we are starting the velvet season. The unbearable heat is subsiding. And that means going on safari for a week. Enjoying the soft sun, the beach, and my wife's new certificate, I hope. This video will be out to you in September. And we'll probably be off on our own dive that day. So wish us luck and Yahoy! Day 3, guys. 5th and 6th dives for just one certificate. But the most important and necessary one. It's the one that allows you to proudly call yourself a diver. Albeit, for now, a beginner. But still a real one. Even our specially invited actor will not be able to overshadow the wonderful mood from this realization. In an orange and blue car. We just won't notice him, and head to the dive center. In three days, this place has become, if not home, then certainly a place of residence. Familiar people, familiar beach, familiar yachts and such a native deck. The rustle of the waves and the stunning landscape of Hergada beyond. Did you know that even the natives of this resort town unanimously confirm the fact? Hergada's waterfront is delightful. Dot but only if you look at it from the seaside. Ehab is absolutely right, and his cheerful mood will follow us around all day. Or almost all day. Let's go in order. First, let's get dressed. If you think that putting on even a short wetsuit is an easy task, watch our little diver. The suit should tightly fit all the seductive shapes of your body. First and foremost, it should keep you warm, that's why it's tight. Especially when new. Successfully dressed before arriving at the reef, well done. We put on a buoyancy compensator, mask, fins, check the equipment and run into the water, where you are already waiting for the instructor and operator. And at this moment time seems to freeze. You are no longer a tourist. You are a diver without five minutes. Attention to the teacher. A mental translation of the signs and you're underwater. Never before has it been so simple and clear to you. The third day is more about real diving than about studying, more about getting acquainted with sea creatures than about passing the next test. Old friends are already waiting for you at the bottom. Learn from unrequited love and kisses from Ehab, a yellow spotted moray eel, hurries to give you the right route along the reef. She knows what will happen if she's not useful at least this way. And since we now know how to control our buoyancy, proper trim, and pay almost no attention to the mentor, let me let you in on a secret. The third day in the open water diver program is not obligatory at all. And, if you want and if you have a good tongue, you can get the certificate in one weekend. Although I don't recommend it. After all, the fifth and sixth dives are aimed at consolidating skills, they give you more freedom in getting to know the underwater world. They make you feel part of something bigger amazing and magical, and you'll finally feel the warmth and love of the sea. And these are not just pretty phrases. Warmth is as important to a diver underwater as air. The love and trust for your buddy, other divers and, most importantly, the underwater world is always mutual. And today, especially, it seems to me that the Red Sea felt our love and opened the veil on a few more of its secrets. It has let a new inhabitant into its embrace. Look at the luminescence of the actinia. It's the first time I've ever seen it. What have we got here?
Dolphins appeared suddenly and swam only 20 centimeters away from Ludmila, making her eyes rounded. I think that it was this encounter that touched the deepest strings of her soul. And, against all inhibitions, Luda gave in to Ehab's entreaties and provocations and showed us her famous hovering again. Well, the dolphin stories continue. Even these beautiful mammals came today to congratulate Luda on her first certificate. I probably didn't get a very good shot of them. But, hopefully, at least we'll see something. And here is a vivid and clear example of why it is better to have your own personal mask. It's a sight to behold. I hope I don't become a rental diving mask in my next life. It's a disappointing fate. And it's too early for our little diver to jump off the boat and dive in drift mode. This science is taught during the second certificate, Advanced Open Water. Our business for today is to improve the acquired skills. One of the exercises, trim along the seabed at a distance of no more than 30 centimeters. Being an operator on this exercise is such a learning experience. Looking into the raised silt and controlling the distance to the bottom is not my favorite thing to do underwater. I'll have to be sure to teach my wife how to frog swim. Or, as they say in the dive community, frog swimming. Less physical effort, less disturbed sand. It is not only Ludmila and I who are happy about the almost complete absence of tedious exercises today. Ehab is also in an extremely high spirits, which he does not forget to demonstrate regularly. Do you see the fish? Neither do I, but no underwater ninja escapes our teacher's gaze. Some of the fish, trying to appear decorative, are better not seen. No, it's great to see them. Just don't touch them. This rockfish is more like me after my alarm clock goes off on Monday morning. Or maybe it's just frustrated with having to be the most poisonous fish on the planet since the Jurassic period. Isn't she cute? Wait, who's cute? Who's poisonous? I would argue. The red sea lionfish have all the disadvantages of our grumpy friend. With a little more speed, the sharks would be at the back of the food chain. But speed is more of a flute fish. Whoa! Underwater rabbits! Yeah, an Ehab could add some reaction speed. You can't catch a puffer fish that easily. And while my companions are having fun and getting ready for the surface, I, in the company of Batfish am contemplating a gift for my wife on the occasion of receiving the certificate. 
A bouquet of underwater flowers is a good idea. This one's good. Hey, wait, what are you doing? If you don't want it, I'll find someone else. This couple looks promising. And you too. What's wrong with you? Well, this flower hasn't even grown yet. Good thing Ehab offered an alternative, a beautiful seashell. Oh, no, take it from the current owner. I guess I'll just have to take my wife to a restaurant the old-fashioned way. Let's go. Okay, guys, we're on the surface. We've been waiting around for a little over an hour. And we're done. Now we're waiting for Ehab to sign off on this. To get the coveted piece of paper. Hopefully, next time we'll be able to go diving with my wife, just the two of us. Oops. Now we'll dry off. Warm up a bit and go to celebrate. In the role of a little moralizing, I will say the following. The teacher, as well as the textbook, should not be perceived by you as the only truth. Each person is an individual. Everyone is responsible for himself. Everyone, in time, finds his own ways and techniques for comfortable diving. But I give you my word, whether you want to or not, you will still take a lot from your teacher. Skill confidence in your abilities, an understanding of how to manage your time during and after grueling dives. No, you will never be a copy of your mentor. You don't have to. You've already gotten the best out of him. You have already become something more to each other than just a teacher and his padawan. You've already conquered your fear. You're a real submariner now. And me? I'm glad to be able to open up the world to another wonderful person. And yes, the world of diving is not just about diving. Welcome to the club of great people who even have beer in their wetsuits. The dive community will give you dozens of new friends, hundreds of shared hours below and above sea level, and millions of funny stories and unexpected events. Isn't that... Today one story ends, and in a week a new one awaits you. After all, yours truly has a lot to learn as well. This is more channel. See you at the bottom.